it's Nokia's very first Android flagship ever, unbelievably. Um, obviously used to stick with good old Windows back in the day, but it's now made the switch to Google's mobile OS. And we're just gonna do a quick unboxing, set up and all that kind of stuff, so you can see exactly what to expect. Uh, so this is the box itself, uh, as you can see, not immediately obvious that it is the Nokia here, just the nice big Nokia branding and some people holding hands, which is, you know, lovely, Karen Sharon and all that. Um, around the side of here, obviously, you finally got a bit of uh, Nokia 8 action. And as you can see down here, it is a pure, secure, and up-to-date version of Android. Uh, so basically what it means is Nokia hasn't bothered to actually tinker with the software at all. And that's about as uh, exciting as the box gets. We've obviously got a few of the specs and stuff on the back. This is actually the, the shiny, uh, polished copper model, uh, as you can see here. So let's pop it out. Ah, oh, look at that, lovely. Uh, definitely our favorite version uh, that you can you can buy it in. You can also buy it in matte blue, uh, polished blue or matte silver. But this is definitely the standout model. Uh, it just looks like that nice sort of salmon-y finish. Definitely stands out from the rest of the crowd. Uh, so we'll take a look at uh, the phone in depth in a second. So I'm gonna take a look at the rest of the box first because it's always highly exciting, of course. Hey, look, a Pokey Pin. Oh, look, I've got two Pokey Pin things, wow. To buy one get one free brilliant uh not that i actually bought this of course but uh shh, don't tell anyone uh knock it in instructions warranty yada 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 uh you also get oh you get some lovely headphones bundled with it there you go uh with some bonus earbuds always good uh so don't expect them to be amazing quality but should definitely do the job as a backup pair then let's see what else we have in here hopefully a means of charging the phone uh, what do we got? Yes, okay, so there we go. Three pin plug, which is always good. Sometimes it's the two pin European uh, version that we get with uh, our review samples. Um, it's gonna be 599 euros when this bad boy uh, comes out in September. Uh, haven't got a UK price yet, but we're expecting it to be around 549, 2599 pounds. We generally get screwed on that thanks to good old import taxes and the rest. And as you can see, it's good old Type-C USB for charging as well. Oh, and a little sides mounted slot there. Beautiful stuff. Right, so that's the box. Let's get rid of all that nonsense. And let's have a look at the actual phone itself. Uh, so we've actually done a full hands-on review with this, so go check that out if you haven't already, as well as a couple of comparisons as well with the likes of the OnePlus. Um, as you can see, nice uh, dual sight, double lens camera. Uh, only juts ever so slightly from the surface, uh, not too bad at all. Uh, nice sort of rounded frame, although it, is, uh, it does have quite chunky bezels. Let's just uh, see if we can power it up. Yes, very good stuff. Uh, quite chunky bezels above and below, kind of similar to Sony Xperia mobiles. So it does actually have a fair, a fair bit of girth to it. It feels more like the, uh, the OnePlus 5, another sort of 5.5 inch handsets, despite being a 5.3 inch. Oh, yes, I never get bored of listening to that tone. Uh, of course, obviously, a bit of SIM card and uh, micro SD memory card slot on the side there. Uh, up top, a headphone jack. Then you've got power and volume buttons around the side there. And then down below, you've got the Type-C USB and the, uh, the speaker grill. Um, so yeah, as I say, this is definitely our favorite finish. It does, of course, scuff up a storm. Uh, you can hopefully see there, we've already got quite a lot of fingerprint marks on it, even though I've just been handling it for a, a few seconds. Uh, but it looks like actually it might already be, yeah, it's already uh, been set up by the looks of it by uh, Nokia. So we're straight into those uh, those raw Android desktops. Uh, so I'm going to go through and uh, just have a quick uh, scan through the interface itself. Uh, as I say, we have done a hands-on review, so you can go check that out as well if you so desire. But, um, oh, let's just uh, stop this from spinning around every five seconds, which is going to get annoying. Of course, it's got a uh, fingerprint sensor uh, built into the home button just beneath the screen now, which you can hopefully make out there, as well as the uh, physical back and recent apps button. So it's nice, easy placement, which is always good. I'll get that set up later, but certainly in our hands-on, it seems very, very quick and responsive, uh, which is always good. Uh, of course, full access to the Play Store and all the rest of it. As you can see, it's uh, all of the usual Google apps that you would expect on there and no bonus stuff from Nokia, uh, certainly that I can see. It's all the, the Play stuff, all of Google's own apps that come pre-installed. Um, so that means, of course, one of the benefits of that is that you get most of the storage space still available. Uh, so if you scroll down the storage, as you can see, only 14 gigs have been used up, not too bad. And you get 64 gigs, so you've still got 50 gigs uh, using my math-centric brain. Uh, in order to fill up with your own apps, photos, all that kind of stuff. And of course, you've got full micro SD expandability as well. If you dive into the display, of course, it's got, you've got your usual adaptive display. You can fiddle with the brightness and all the rest of it. Let's change the sleep to like 10 minutes, otherwise it's going to constantly hibernate. Uh, a bit of glance screen, tap to wake, 
and uh, all the rest of it. Navigation key lights, you can obviously configure those as well if you so desire. I'm um, not seeing any kind of uh, night mode, unfortunately, but that uh, will hopefully come with a bit of Android O action. Uh, one of the other benefits, of course, of having a very raw form of Android on here is that you should get updates very, very quickly indeed in a timely fashion, so hopefully just after the Pixel 2s are launched actually with Android O pre-installed. Uh, battery life hopefully will be good. It's a 3,090 milliamp battery, I believe it was, even though we were told 30,080 in the pre-briefing. Um, but hopefully that should keep you going for a good long time. Uh, obviously got the usual battery saver modes. Uh, you can see exactly which apps have been consuming all of your power and tell them to bugger off and stop doing it. So that's always good. Uh, you get some uh, one basic gesture control, which is to jump to the camera by uh, pressing the power button twice. And that is it. So we can uh, just test that out now. Sorry, I did a really poor job of that. Let's try again. There we go. And you're jumping straight into the dual sight camera. Again, we've had a full uh, go through this in our hands-on review, so go check that out if you want to uh, to see the camera in action. Uh, but yeah, it's two 13 megapixel snappers that work together. One color, one uh, monochrome, the color lens has OIS. They're both f2.0. Uh, we did test out the camera a little bit last night uh, on one of the review samples. And it's not great in low light, got to admit, a little bit grainy and everything, um, but overall not too bad. And uh, in everyday uh, life, it uh, definitely does the job. Um, so of course you get full Google now and all the rest of it as well. I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. I mean, if you know Android, you'll, uh, you'll know exactly what to expect. To look at, this is off to a good start. The Nokia 8 has most of the hallmarks of a modern flagship while continuing the design language of the last three models. It has an attractive and very slim all aluminium design with an average thickness of 7.3mm. It's 4.6mm at the thinnest point and 7.9mm at its thickest. It comes in a matte silver, matte blue, polished blue and a very eye-grabbing polished copper. These colours adorn the back of the device but not the front. On the front you get a 5.3 inch Quad HD 2560x1440 display with 700 nits of brightness. It certainly looked very bright and crisp in my brief testing period. So it's quite stunning from the rear, but the device is also something of a fingerprint magnet, and it's very slippery. Those bezels are also starting to look a little bit last year compared to some of the other top of the range phones. It's also not waterproof, but rather splash proof with an IP54 rating. And specs wise, this is once again a very good flagship showing, and it should be able to trade blows with the likes of the S8. The Nokia 8 is powered by a 2.45GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 and it's backed up by 4GB of RAM. This should make it more than capable of handling the most demanding tasks. More interesting is some advanced cooling which makes use of a copper pipe and graphite shielding in order to disperse heat evenly across the phone. That means there shouldn't be any noticeable hotspot on the body of the device and reportedly that'll let you push the performance harder and for longer. Another thoughtful design choice was placing the antenna at the top and the bottom of the phone which should prevent those from getting covered by your hand while you use it, and it should allow for some of the best signal sensitivity in the industry, potentially leading to a better battery life. That battery is a 3090 milliamp hour battery with quick charge 3.0. The phone also comes with 64 gigabytes of internal storage, but this will be expandable up to 256 gigabytes using an SD card. In terms of software, we can expect an entirely clean Android experience with no customization or bloatware. This should also mean that the device will receive quick updates and Nokia promises that owning a Nokia 8 will be one of the fastest ways to get Android O in your hands. Of course that remains to be seen. But I've been saving the best till last. The star of the show here is definitely the camera. The camera is the result of a partnership between HMD and Zeiss, and it's the core experience the phone is designed around. The rear shooter utilises two sensors, one colour and one monochrome. These two images are then combined into a single shot with greater contrast using image fusion technology. This is basically what we've seen on other handsets like the Honor 8 and the Honor 9. Both those sensors are 13 megapixel, but in a unique twist, so too is the front-facing camera, which utilizes the exact same camera module, in fact. That also means you get autofocus up front, which is another rare feature for a selfie camera. So the reasoning behind having a 13 megapixel camera on both the front and the back was to support what the company sees as the Nokia's killer feature, the Bofi. The Bofi feature allows users to snap photos or record video using footage from both the front and the rear camera split down the middle 50-50. Whether shooting in this mode or recording regular video, that can then be streamed directly to Facebook Live or YouTube natively from the camera app. And what also makes this a good choice for content creation is top tier audio recording, which uses Ozo Audio. 
Using multiple microphones, it can capture a high dynamic range and record binaural audio. That means someone watching your Facebook live stream with the headphones on will be able to hear stereo sound with no need to own specific software themselves. So in theory, the audio quality should be able to match the video quality when capturing your story on the move. So I had a go at the camera and I found it to be a good shooter capable of some detailed, contrasty shots. I wasn't able to get the photos off the device though, so we'll need more time to test before we can make the final verdict. I'm also not sure that the Bothy mode is really anything that couldn't be accomplished on any other device with the right app, but having that feature so readily available means that more users will be likely to try it, and it certainly really emphasises what this phone is all about. Whether it's something we'll see more content developers using in future will remain to be seen, but more to the point, this is about the 13 megapixel front-facing camera with autofocus. That's a compelling feature and it's one that will no doubt appeal to vloggers, backpackers, or anyone else who enjoys turning the camera on themselves. And when you couple that with the sleek design, the pure Android experience, and top-of-the-range specs, I'm sure there'll be a large audience for this phone. So the Nokia 8 will be available globally on September the 6th for a price of €599. Euros. We'll have a full review ready for you then, so you can find out whether this truly is a competitive flagship from Nokia, and whether it's a good phone to document your life with.